Jesus Christ. Good evening and praise the Lord. I hope wherever you are tuned from, you are okay, you are safe, and that the Lord has been good to you and to your family. Welcome to our tonight's Bible study. I hope you got your Bible, your notebook, and a pen. Uh, we are going to be looking at a few passages from the book of Ezra, and I want to share about what we need to be able to accomplish the mission of God in our lives and in our world today. Um, I, before we, we get into the study, uh, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. I pray that you speak to us tonight, O God, in our situations, O God. I pray that, King of glory, you will speak to us, O Lord, and God Almighty, your word will bring light into our lives, and God Almighty, you will help us to respond to your word uh, accordingly, and God Almighty, be able to accomplish that which King of Glory, you have commanded us. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Once again, welcome to our Bible study tonight. Uh, we are reading from the book of Ezra. Just a quick... Um, a background about the book of uh, Ezra. First, the author is um, Ezra the scribe, and um, Ezra is a descendant of Aaron, the chief priest, and uh, it is his zeal for God that spurred him to lead a group of Jews back to uh, Jerusalem to rebuild the temple that had been destroyed by uh, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and the events uh, in this book are set in Jerusalem and its surrounding areas the book provides us an account of uh, Jews regathering that is from Babylon and their struggle to survive and to rebuild the temple and also their spiritual condition um, I love it because by the end of the book, Israel had already renewed uh, uh, her covenant with God and began acting in uh, obedience to God's word. Um, so today I want to share briefly about uh, what we need to be able to accomplish the mission that God has commanded us to accomplish in our lives and also in our world today. Um, the background of this book is that Judah and Benjamin had been in Babylonian captivity for 70 years. And in due time, and of course in response to the prophetic word, uh, the children of uh, uh, Benjamin and Judah were able to return to Jerusalem and they began to rebuild the temple according to God's command to King Cyrus of Persia. Uh, through the book, as, as you read, you realize that the work, as much as it was God's command and it was um, in fulfillment to the promise that God had already given to Jeremiah, the work was not without opposition. There arose opposition and the work stopped for about uh, 16 years or so. But ultimately, the temple was rebuilt, it was finished, and it was dedicated and that's not what I want to talk about. Uh, reasons that made this mission to be accomplished in spite of the challenges, in spite of the opposition. 
Um, and I want us to start with the first point, which is the sovereignty of God. Uh, we look at Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 23. Second Chronicles chapter 20, 36, verse 23. The Bible says, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heaven has given me, and he has commanded me to build him, a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is among you all his people. May the Lord, his God, be with him and let him go up. Also, uh, Ezra chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. So the first thing that we need for us to be able to accomplish the mission of God in our world, uh, in our lives, is acknowledging the sovereignty of God in ordaining and commissioning people uh, to carry out his mandate. For us to be able to accomplish the mission of God, we must appreciate that it is God who ordained us, it is God who commissioned us, and it is him who appointed us. The same way he did for King Cyrus, he ordained him and commissioned him to carry out his purposes. The same way God has ordained you, he has positioned you, and he has commissioned you to carry out his mandate. And he has also commissioned and uh, appointed people to help you to be able to carry out his mandate in the world. The second thing uh, is the faithfulness of God. Looking at Ezra chapter 1, verse 1, we see that uh, whatever um, King Cyrus was doing was in response to the word of the Lord through the mouth of Jeremiah the prophet. It was so that the word of God would be fulfilled. God is a promise keeper. When he says, he does. Whatever he has said, he is able to do it. Uh, he said the temple would be built 70 years ago, uh, 70 years then. And in due time, he fulfilled his promise to Jeremiah. The temple was rebuilt. So God is a, is a promise keeper. If he has said something, you can stand on his faithfulness as God. The third thing is uh, faith in the prophetic word. When you look at um, uh, uh, chapter 4, we see that a lot there was opposition, there was resistance to the rebuilding of the temple. But the Bible says in verse 1, uh, because of that resistance, the work stopped for about uh, 16, 16 years. But the Bible says in verse chapter 5, verse 1, Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Edo, prophets, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, who was over them. Verse 2, So Zerubbabel, and the son of Shetiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, rose up and began to rebuild the house of God, which is in Jerusalem, and the prophets of God were with them, helping them. Verse 3, at the, at the same time, Tatenai, the governor of the region beyond the river, and Shethar Bosnai, and their companions came to them and spoke thus to them, Who has commanded you to, re, to build this temple and to finish this wall? Then accordingly, we told them the names of the men who were constructing this wall. So uh, we see that the work had stopped because of the resistance they were going through, because of the opposition they were facing. But upon the prophetic word, when uh, prophet uh, Haggai and uh, Zechariah prophesied, the people stood on the prophetic word and they, re they began rebuilding the temple. So um, in spite of the opposition, these people, they recognized that God's word 
was final and so they began rebuilding the temple as they awaited for the approval of um, King Darius they stood on the prophetic and they began uh, rebuilding the work resumed based on the prophetic word so um, today I encourage someone who feels uh, like you don't there is there is a lot that is going on there is opposition there is um, resistance uh, if the Lord spoke it, if God spoke it to you all through uh, his prophets, stand on that prophetic word and begin doing that which he has commanded you to do. And this brings me to the fourth point, and that is divine protection. Looking at Ezra chapter 5, uh, just before chapter, just before um this chapter that is chapter four we see that there is that opposition that has caused the work to stop but in chapter five we see that upon the prophetic word the men began rebuilding the temple and the bible says in verse five the eye of their god was upon the elders of the jews so that they could not make them cease till a report could go to darius then a written answer was returned concerning the matter so uh, in spite of the opposition the eye of god was upon the people they were not stopped so even now when you're attempting to do that which god has told you to do and there is opposition there is resistance there are challenges i want to encourage you that the eye of god is upon you the eye of protection and he will see you through whatever it is that he has commanded you to do. The fifth thing is about God's providence. We look at um, Ezra chapter 6, uh, starting from, from verse 3. The Bible shows us that everything that was needed, every resource that was required for the rebuilding of the temple, God provided. And this is how he provided the Bible says that in the first year of King Cyrus, King um, King Cyrus, King Cyrus issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house of God be rebuilt, the place where they offered sacrifices, and let the foundation of of it be firmly laid. Its height sixty cubits and its width sixty cubits, with three rows of heavy stone stones and one row of new timber let the expenses be paid from the king's treasury let also let gold and silver articles of uh, the house of god which nebuchadnezzar took from the temple which is in jerusalem and brought to babylon be restored and taken back to the temple which is in jerusalem each to its place and deposit them in the house of god then verse uh, 8 says, Moreover, I issue a decree as to what you shall do for the elders of these Jews, for the building of this house of God. Let the cost be paid at the king's expense from the taxes on the region beyond the river. This, ha this is to be given immediately to these men so that they are not hindered. And whatever they need, young bulls, rams, lambs, for the burnt offerings and of the for the burnt offerings of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the request of the priests who are in Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail. So we see the providence of God. The Bible says in Psalm 24, verse 1, that the earth and everything thereof belongs to God. Psalm 50. The cattle upon, upon thousand hills belong to God. Haggai chapter 2 verse uh, 8, silver and gold belong to God. And so in such a position, God is able to provide divinely for his work to be accomplished. So you might be um, wondering, how am I going to carry out this mandate? How am I going to do the work of God? How am I going to accomplish that which God has commanded me to accomplish or to do? And probably I don't have what it takes. I want to encourage you tonight that God is in a position to provide divinely for his work to be accomplished. You only need to trust him to provide. Lastly, uh, we need efficient leadership 
for us to be able to accomplish that which God has commanded us. And from where we began, we've seen that it is God who positions, it is God who appoints, it is God who commissions people to carry out his mandate. God also positions people, leaders, great men who are there to guide us, to direct us, to teach us to do that which God desires of us. And so uh, when we look at Ezra chapter 5 verse 1, we see it's because of that prophetic word, that leadership offered by uh, uh, Zechariah and Haggai, that people were able to uh, re uh, rebuild, that people were able to resume the work. And the Bible says that these men were there to help them. They were not there just to spectate and give the prophetic word. No, the Bible says that they were also there to help. So for us to accomplish the mission of God, we need godly leaders. We need efficient leadership. Verse uh, chapter 6, verse 14, that is Ezra chapter 6, verse 14. The Bible says, um, the Bible says, uh, so the elders of the Jews built and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edo. And they, rebuilt, they built and finished it according to the commandment of God, or the God of Israel, and according to the command of Cyrus, Darius, and Atexas, king of Persia. So you see, we need leadership. We need efficient leadership. We need men who... God appoints and positions and commissions so that they can be able to direct us, so that they can be able to offer help and encouragement and the support needed for us to be able to carry out the mandate of God. I don't know what God has commanded you to do. I don't know what mission God has given you to do. But there is one general one that God has given us, and that is to go to all nations making disciples and God has promised that he will be with us to the end. I want to encourage you today that God is sovereign and in his sovereignty he will appoint men, he will position people on your way to help you, to support you, to encourage you to be able to carry out his mandate. He will be faithful to his word. If he began something good in you and he commanded you to do it, you can count him as faithful. He is faithful. He is a promise keeper. You can have faith in the prophetic word and you can move out knowing that there is that protection that he will grant you as you carry out his mandate and he will provide and he will appoint men and women who will be there to lead you, to guide you, to help you, to support you, and to encourage you, and also to rebuke you so that you are able to accomplish the mission of God successfully. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word is never in vain. Every time you allow us, Lord, to uh, hear your word, there is a purpose for which, God, you sent that word to accomplish. And so I pray tonight that your word will be accomplished in our lives. I pray that King of Glory, you will help us to respond to your word accordingly so that God Almighty be able to carry out the mandate for which you've given us, so that God will be able to accomplish the mission for which King of Glory you send us, Lord, to accomplish in the world today. I thank you because God Almighty, in spite of the opposition, God, you will be there to protect us. You will be with us to the end of age. God, you will provide for us and you will uh, connect us with people who will be there to support, to help, to encourage us. And God Almighty, to teach us to follow your way and God Almighty, to be able to achieve that which King of Glory is your heart's desire for us. This we pray and we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you're not born again, um, allow me to just lead you in this short prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I have heard your word. And I pray today that you help me to accomplish your mission in, in my life. 
And so I ask you, Lord Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. Lead me and guide me. Protect me and God Almighty, uh, connect me with people who will encourage me, who will support me, and who will help me to accomplish your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have made that prayer and you've given your life to Jesus today, and you just want to, um, uh, you just want someone to uh, follow up with you and to pray with you, you can contact any of our pastors. The numbers are down on your screen, and we'll be able to uh, follow up and know how you're doing. So God bless you so much, and see you um, next time. Amen. <music>